Welcome back to Upfront. We're looking ahead to 2019 and the prospects for jobs, business, and the economy with our panel. Austin Ramirez of Husco International in Waukesha, a global manufacturer and engineering company, and by Corey Nettles of Generation Growth Capital Milwaukee private equity firm, which invests in smaller companies in the upper Midwest. Um, I want to pick up uh, our conversation on, on the economy because I want to talk to you, Austin Ramirez, briefly about workforce needs. Uh, your company is always looking for people. What do we need to be doing on that front? Well, you know, it's a real issue today. I mean, Wisconsin's at, you know, virtually full employment. And uh, across our entire spectrum, whether it's people working on the shop floor or engineers or executives or anything in between, we just cannot find enough good people. So there, there's two issues. One is we've got to encourage more people to come to Wisconsin that can come and fill these jobs. And the second is we've got to do a better job of fostering our human capital here in the state. Because while statewide unemployment is very low, we have pockets, particularly in the city, but also in some other areas, where we have people that are willing and able to work, and it's just about you know, providing them with the skills and the transportation, in some cases, they need to help fill these workforce gaps. Corey Nettles, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about uh, the future of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. Governor-elect Evers has said here and other places that he'd like to get rid of it and replace it with the uh, Commerce Department again. Um, what do you think? What's the future of WEDC? What should it be? You know, so I've been agnostic about structure and whether it's the old Commerce Department or the quasi-public-private uh, entity that is WEDC, which I was very involved uh, more than 10 years ago in helping uh, from a policy perspective come up with a different strategy and different structure. You know, I would, I, my advice to him again in the first year or so is just to not get bogged down in mm -hmm. that kind of administrative organizational minutia. It's deck chairs and focus on the substantive work and not on the structure. So I would tell him to punt on that. Uh, and really it's not something he has to do right no, away. No, I would, I would leave it alone uh, and I would let that structure continue to run because it's quasi-private, public-private, it's actually able to do things that the the old Commerce Department couldn't do. It's able to uh, leverage and access resources that a strictly public governmental entity could not. So I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't really get bogged down into that. I am a little concerned for him, in fairness to him, the foolishness that we saw out of the legislature in stripping him of his power to hire the Commerce Secretary, the WDC Executive Director, who's, who's really a member of his cabinet. That was really a bad... For the first nine months. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a bad idea. Affecting his ability on board appointments was a bad idea. So I'm hoping on both both sides, we can rise above that kind of foolishness. But I would really tell them, leave the structure alone, figure it out, and then if it really ends up being a burning platform, you want to revisit it, fine, but I, I'd leave mm -hmm. it alone. I, I want to ask you each about the, the national economy and its impact on Wisconsin. Austin Ramirez, you've been fairly outspoken about the impact of tariffs on your business and other businesses. Uh, how much can the, uh, the national economy affect uh, our ability to grow and to be successful here in Wisconsin? Well, absolutely. It's probably the single, single biggest factor that affects Wisconsin businesses is what's happening in the national economy. And I think, um, I think we're at risk for a recession in 2019. Um, you know, the impact of trade policy is one of those things that takes a while for it to really trickle into the economy. And um, I, think, I think we're seeing lots of factors from trade policy to the, to the whiplashing of uh, the stock market to uncertainty on in interest rates and lots of things that add up to make me uh, a little bit cautious about the U.S. economy heading into 2019. What, what should happen, in your opinion, to, to the tariffs issue? I mean, are, we, we've gone down that road so far. What should happen next in order to make sure that businesses are not being significantly damaged long term by this policy? Yeah, sure. So I think the federal government's job is to find ways to welcome China into the global economic order in ways that don't disadvantage U.S. companies. Um, and you know, China's been a bad actor in a lot of things historically, particularly around intellectual property. So it's not that I don't think we need to punish that bad behavior, but punitive tariffs that impact U.S. manufacturers more than they impact Chinese manufacturers, which is what's happening today, is just the wrong policy tool to accomplish that. So I think we need to eliminate these tariffs, focus on other strategic policy initiatives that we can take to, to punish bad behavior by China, but at the same time create uh, carrots that go along with the stick to really welcome them into the global economy. Corey Nettles, I'll give you the final word. I mean, we're talking about a fair amount of uncertainty right now yeah. in the economy nationally, and plus we have some investigations that are swirling out there that yeah. sort of add to that uncertainty. Yeah. How concerned are you about the year ahead? I'm concerned. We're very deep into this cycle, this recovery, so we are due for 
what's already, I think, been a market correction by, by definition and probably a downturn, some kind of recession in 19 or 20. Hopefully it won't be anywhere near as deep and prolonged as the last one was, but I think we're probably a little overdue. And I'm concerned. Ironically, the fundamentals mm, yeah. are really solid. And um, I was talking to someone earlier. It's, it's, sort of, it's, it's, um, it's emotional. It's fear-based. It's maybe a little irrational. It's projecting about all the things that might go wrong, while the underminal, underlying fundamentals Fundamentals are really sound. I mean, companies are doing really well in terms of the orders that they're getting. The unemployment is very strong. We're seeing some movement on rates, on, uh, on wages. So all those fundamentals are sound, but there is a lot of uncertainty out there that's creating anxiety. And I think we're going to go into 19 and 20 and probably find ourselves in recession. Corey Nettles and Austin Ramirez, appreciate your time today. You. Uh, Happy New Year to both of you. Thank Thanks you. for being with us today. Thank you. Coming up next, the view from labor. What do the state's organized labor groups expect from a new administration?